Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have several products that I'm going to be messing around with, but uh, this next one is a project that I just need to hurry up and get done. Uh, this is going to be an aluminum mount, and this mount is going to be for a hologram projector. And you can see here, um, actually these are the fasteners that came with it. Take a look at the type of screws that they included for this type of orifice. It's screwed into this aluminum platter. And there's not very much material there for that to screw into this. It's not very stable. So what we are going to do is we're going to delete this wing mount right here. And we are going to go ahead and drill and tap and mount this T-slot directly to an aluminum block. And then we're going to finish it all off in the end. We're going to put a quarter 20 hole through it. We're going to tap it out and that way there we can mount two camera accessories. And that's basically what I need to do. I need to mount this guy to a tripod, kind of like the one that I'm using here or to a wall mount or whatever. And in order to do that, it has to be quarter 20. So this is going to be the entire process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is drop the part. But uh, next, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and place the part exactly where I want it to go. So it's got to be centered, it's got to be square, and once it's centered in square, you can see here, I took a pen apart, and that's because I'm going to put the pen down the hole, and I'm going to etch into the aluminum and get some ink down there. And you can see the dark holes, or the dark spots that I've made with the ink pen. And actually, while I'm at it, might as well just put the ink pen back together. I do this all the time for my ink pens. <laughs> they, they live a rough life in my shop, that's for sure. So we go, let's put that ink pen back together. Still functional, lovely. It goes back in the ink pen jar. So here is the fastener that I'm gonna use. These here are stainless steel. They're gonna be uh, M4 by 0.7. So that means I need an M4 by 0.7 tap, which that's eventually what I'm going to need to make this project happen. So once I have my two inked sections on the aluminum block, next I'm going to take an automatic center punch. And with an automatic center punch, you're going to put it as close as you can to the center of your inked area. And then you press down on it. You hear that little tap. That tap is a little anvil coming down and striking this, and it creates a hole in your aluminum. Now, the reason that you want to do that is because when you have to drill it, your drill will tend to walk on a flat plane. Even if it's just a little bit, walking in just, let's say, a half a millimeter is enough to completely knock off the alignment. Because mind you, this right here is what we're working with. There's not too much slop in that setup. So that is, yeah, maybe a half a millimeter worth of clearance. Um, so we have to get this right the first times. And the only way you're gonna do that is with an automatic center punch. And there it is, we got it. Now we are ready to take this over and drill it. Now one of the things you should know whenever you're drilling and tapping is your tap needs to have a very specific size drill bit. So we're gonna go ahead and look that up in the drill bit index, and then we'll meet back over at the drill press. All right, guys, here we go. We already have our drills center punched and marked out where we wanna drill the holes. So next, that's uh, gonna be for this one right here. This is the M4 by 0.7, and the drill and tap chart says that the most common equivalent is going to be the 1 8 size drill bit. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and mount up the 1 8 drill bit. I'm going to use the drill press because I want these holes to be as straight down as possible. And I got to make sure that the drill is going to clear the deck. Everything's good. Generally, you want to raise the deck so that this is as close as possible. And this is going to be reasonable. Let's go ahead and put some light on the situation. Okay, when it comes to drills, the smaller the diameter, generally, you're gonna want the faster the speed. The larger the diameter drill bit, 
the slower the speed. And also, when it comes to drilling materials, the softer the material, generally, it's more lenient towards faster speeds, and the harder the material, you want slower speeds and cutting oil. But this is aluminum. Aluminum can be a little gummy, so we are going to use some cutting lubricant, but at the same time, uh, it's a little lenient on the speeds. If you go too fast with certain types of aluminum, you will gum up the drill bit. So it is gonna be lenient. It's a very easy material to work with, generally. Uh, can give you some problems when it comes to tap because aluminum can be very gummy. And when it's gummy, you can break taps. You break a tap, you just ruined your day. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and let's get this guy rolling. Let me get my uh, cutting oil. Not completely necessary, but we're going to. First thing you should know, yes, I am wearing eye protection. I know sometimes I lack on the safety gear, but the drill press is just one area. You don't want to mess around. And especially when you're talking metal filings and aluminum filings. If you guys seen how many aluminum filings I constantly clean up, I, I work a lot with aluminum and I do get like aluminum shavings in my hands and stuff. That's okay. Um, I'm used to it. It's, it's perfectly fine. So anyway, guys, here we go. Um, we're going to set it first, make sure that we are almost exactly where we need to be right there. Okay. My drill press is already set for a uh, reasonably low speed. That's because I'm going to drill at a lower speed. You know, some people just like to hammer right through it. Me, I'm gonna go for precision since we're gonna be tapping these holes low and slow. Make sure that we cut these threads nice and neat. Make sure the hole is nice and neat. We, If you force a drill bit, especially the smaller diameter, they will want to walk at a certain angle. So even though you have it in at one spot, your entry point does not necessarily dictate your exit point. So if you, if you force it down too hard, too fast, the drill bit will be forced in odd directions because it will bend, and then you will not get a cut that's straight through. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, my material's already centered. I got my hand where it needs to go. So you can see it is not operating at a crazy fast speed. There we are. So I'm gonna take it down, check my center point, do a little peck, make sure it's where I want it to go. And you're gonna see something called peck drilling. When you come down and you go back up. And what that's doing is that's breaking the chip. So you can see how it's coiling and then I'm releasing it. And you can actually do this kind of quickly so you're pressing down, release, press down, release. That's called peck drilling. And by breaking those chips, you notice that it's not winding around my drill bit. When you got chips that wind around your drill bit, they can mold themselves to the drill bit and it will smear your hole, change your cutting dimension. It does a lot of stuff, a lot of not good stuff. So there we go. We have one beautifully cut hole. So same thing, we're gonna center it up. Oh, I can tell you one thing for sure is I have, I have a little bit of a burr on the back. So I'm just gonna break that burr a little bit. That way there my workpiece can sit flat. And I'm gonna center it. Do a couple little pecks to make sure I'm where I need to be. Put a little bit of oil on the bit. One more pack and go. So I'm not horsing it. I'm just letting it naturally go through the material. Here we are, we're all the way through. Go ahead and clean that up. I do have a slight burr on the back side. Yep. All right. So let's clean some of these shavings off. Make sure that the work surface is flat because we have one more hole 
yet to cut. And this hole is gonna be a wee bit larger, but because it's gonna be a larger drill bit, first I'm gonna cut something called a pilot hole. And your pilot hole, since I've already got this 3.3 uh, millimeter or 1 8th, I already have it mounted up, I might as well go ahead and continue using this one to do my pilot for the next hole. So what I'm gonna do is pick a spot somewhere near the, the middle of my material between the other two fasteners. Here we go. It creates a nice little indent and we are ready to drill our quarter 20 hole. A little pack right there. So the reason you want the quarter 20 hole to be as center in the material as possible is because that's going to be your anchor point for the camera stand and you want it to be almost balanced because if it's off a wee bit then your camera might sag to the side etc. Alright, you see how it picked my material up there? It picked my material up because I didn't break my chips often enough. I did break them but not often enough. See how long those chips are? They started winding around the drill bit which wanted to pick up my material. So I should have done a better job on that, but I'm talking to the camera and it distracted me. So anyway, that's our primary hole. So now I can go ahead and remove that drill bit. Set him over here. Now for quarter 20, just the same way, there's a very specific size drill bit that you're gonna use for a quarter 20 hole. And I keep all my drill and tap sets together in envelopes like this, so I always know where to find my uh, final dimension drill bit. So this one here is a, what, number nine high-speed steel. And let's see, that's the M6. Here's the quarter 20. So that's what a quarter 20 size uh, tap looks like. And let's see, this other one right here is, it's a 5.0. So it's not going to be that one. It's going to be that stainless steel. All right. So let's go ahead and get this guy mounted back up with the correct drill bit. And let's cut some more. So when you're putting a drill bit into a drill press, you can see I'm doing a, a bunch of things all at once. So one of the things I did is I opened the chuck wide enough so that I wasn't dragging the bit on anything. And then... What I do is I kind of wiggle it while I'm tightening it down and you want to put the shank as far up into the chuck as possible to right about the flutes on the drill bit. Then tighten it down and notice one other thing guys, up here on my drill press I have a holder for my chuck key. I have a spring loaded chuck key and that prevents it from sticking in the chuck. If there's a situation where it's stuck in the chuck and I flick it on. Now I've got a projectile, which could catch my hand or whatever. Very dangerous. So I have a spring-loaded chuck key. I have a spot for it. And I've also seen the magnetic uh, chuck key holders. Those ones are pretty cool too. And when this guy wears out a little bit more, I'll go ahead and move to the spring-loaded or the uh, magnetic ones. But here we are. Okay, let's get some oil up on her. Do that same peck. There it goes. Make sure it's centered. And same technique, peck drilling. We want to break those chips off. There we are. Nice and easy. And that's the key to using a pilot hole. Is the pilot hole does a lot of the dirty work. It figures out where in the material you want the hole, and then you can step it up. So you can see right here, uh, my large quarter 20 hole is far enough from these two, it won't interfere, but at the same time, it's gonna be centered in my material. So that's gonna make a very nice mount plate. All right, now we're moving on to the next phase. We have to tap some holes. All right, guys. So when I'm done with the drills and the taps, I'm gonna go ahead and place them back in here. This is my drill and tap drawer. I don't have any uh, 
tap kits in here. They're down below in their own drawer. But I have all sorts of different marking materials, different types of drill bits, um, hole saw, you name it, center punches. I have a lot of different stuff in here because I do a lot of different types of metal work. Anyway, uh, we're gonna use some T-handle tap wrenches. And I have the quarter 20 and this guy over here, which is the M4 by seven. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out a towel because I wanna collect all these filings. And you're gonna see, I have a little trick to get the filings out of the holes. So here we go, here's our two tap wrenches. Here's our stock. Let's clean off some of that oil. All right, so the first holes that we should cut are gonna be the M4. It's these two holes right here. It is a small size tap, so we have to be pretty careful on it. And the quarter 20, eh, not so much. It'll be all right. But still, I've broken every type of tap you can think of. So let's do this. First step, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the tap a little lubricated. Now, you don't necessarily have to use lube when working with aluminum, but I definitely do. It helps evacuate the chips, makes it so much easier. So one of the things that you want to do when starting out a tap is you wanna make sure that the tap is as straight as possible. And me doing this in front of the camera is not gonna make that easy. So you get your tap started you're gonna feel a little bit of resistance. That's when I'm gonna add a little bit more lubrication. And here is where you're going to go back and forth. So you go clockwise until you reach some resistance and then you go backwards to break the chip. Then you go forward, go back to break a chip. Forward, back to break the chip. You can actually hear it snapping those chips off internally. Hear that? And this is where a lot of people mess up. When, you're, when your tap goes most of the way in and it starts getting harder and harder to break off those chips, some people try and power through it and you might get lucky, but the chance of you breaking off that tap is pretty good, pretty darn good. I am most of the way through this hole, so this is gonna be an easy, easy drive. So I generally try to go half to three quarters of a turn, quarter turn back. And you're gonna do this all the way through the material. And yes, this does get tiring. <laughs> so you can see the nose of my tap. You can see some of the debris coming out. That's all good signs. You can see as I continue doing the same thing, what it looks like as it comes out the bottom. Now that I've gotten the tip through, the rest of the chips can kind of push through the bottom and I don't have to break the chip anymore so I can just keep threading it down like so. So once the tap is through, there's these channels in this type of tap. This is a straight wall tap. There are twist taps, which I prefer, but this time, this style right here, you're gonna have a lot of debris that's caught in those threads. And if I back it out in this condition, there's a good chance that I'll mar some of the threads. So one of the things I like to do is thread. So one of the things I like to do is I like to put some of the fluid down through the tap and it'll help evacuate some of those chips out the bottom. You can see a lot of those chips bleeding down the end of the tap. So I'm gonna take my towel, clean off as many of those chips as possible that came out of the hole. And now I can carefully back this guy out, just like so. See right there was a chip. So I'm trying to keep the tap as even and level as possible when I'm taking it out, especially for this last thread. The last thread, you wanna make sure that it's nice and clean because that's your starting thread.
Okay. So now I have a dirty tap. You can take your oil, spray a little bit of oil down your tap. Look at that. Cleans it right off. And that's why I, I use these shop towels is because it captures a lot of those metal filings. You can either take it out in the yard and shake it off, or you can eventually throw away your towel. So there's one hole, completely threaded, looks beautiful. Let's do the next. So this time, I'll do it a little bit faster. There we go. oil so this m4 it's such a small diameter you have to be really careful. I'm trying not to flex it. You see both my hands moving at the same time. I'm not bending it, not putting any stress on it whatsoever. There you go. You can see some of the chips coming out the bottom. Let's go ahead and put some oil down her. See a lot of those chips start bleeding out the bottom. There you go, there's a lot of them coming out. So we're gonna clean a lot of those chips off and then back it out. So these are the difficult ones. The quarter 20 is gonna be much, much easier. These little M4s are tiny. There we go. So when I get the holes completely cut out, yes, I use the oil to clean off the, the tap, especially before storage. Never ever put a, a tap away dirty. There you go, clean tap, beautiful. Now the next stage is to evacuate any remaining chips from the hole. And the way to do that is with your can of oil, you'll see a bunch of stuff will come out right here on this spot. Yep, there's a bunch of metal chips that came out. Let's try the next hole. All right, some metal chips came out of that side. And now, both those holes look beautiful. So I got a little bit of a burr on the back side. That's no problem. I can take care of that with the chamfer bit. And generally you might want to chamfer your holes anyway at the very final and that's just because that may, leaves for a good finished project all right so next let's go ahead and do this quarter 20. here we go There it is, there it is. So these are gonna be bigger chips. Bigger chips means that you can't horse it. You gotta go a little bit slower. But this is also a coarse thread. So that's 20 threads per inch. That's the quarter 20. Big, big chips. Uh oh, and my tap wrench is not sitting on there well. Let's see. There we go. Oi, oi, oi. So. What's happening is my, my tap wrench is a little bit too large. 
So I need to tighten it down a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's got it good. Okay. You can see some of the chips coming out the bottom. A little more oil. Whenever it starts feeling a little gummy, that's when I back it off, put some oil down it, go a little bit further. You can see the bottom of the tap coming through right there. It's almost through. There it is. Let's go ahead and clean some of those off before they get in my hand. There it is, quarter 20 hole. Excellent. There we go. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and clean out the hole from any remaining chips. Oh yeah, definitely got some back in there. There we go. So one of the next things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna chamfer this, these holes. It's quick, it's easy, especially if you have a good chamfer bit. All right, so now I got that cleaned off, ready to go into storage. So inside this magical drawer of wonder, it's gonna be all my chamfer bits. And I've got, I've got a collection of them. So I've got larger ones like this. I've got some smaller ones like this. I have some carbides. I have all different types of chamfer bits. So what the goal is behind these bits is it's going to put a beveled edge on your finished piece. So instead of having sharp corners near your uh, threaded holes, what it's going to do is create a bevel. And that leaves for a nice, beautiful finish. Oh, if it would stay in my impact wrench, that is. There we go. Okay. So when you're doing a chamfer, you want to keep it as straight up and down as possible. And you don't even have to run it very long. You can see the edge it makes a nice, beautiful edge. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Next side. Very nice, very nice indeed. All right, let's clean off the chamfer a bit. So one of the reasons I use a lot of cutting oil and a lot of oil in general is not only because it's less wear and tear on your tools, but it also coats your tools for when you put them away. This is Houston and Houston has high humidity and I like my tools. I would rather they be preserved. So that's something that uh, we have to be cognizant of, especially some of these uh, tool steel parts. They love to get surface rust. So a little bit of extra cutting oil on there and then you just wipe it on, leave it on when you put your tools away. It's not gonna hurt anything, nothing but the best. Okay, so now that we have 
the champ ears cut, everything is set. We have one extra thing left to do. We're going to go ahead and finish off these rough edges with a wire brush. So let's do that next. So the finished edge, while it's not perfectly smooth, I could do that, I can finish it off. The most important thing is that all these edges right here are cleaned up. And all of them have to be nice and smooth. Much, much better. That's beautiful. So that's the finished end. This is the rough end. Very sharp. go that's a beautiful finished end all the corners are nice and smooth that's a finished mount block no rough edges because of the champ here beautiful threads anyway guys just wanted to show you guys a, a quick little video on threading and tapping some holes it's a project that I had to do anyway and at the very least, maybe you learned something. Uh, maybe you have some suggestions for me. Uh, I've been doing this for many years, but you know, everybody can always do something better. So always curious to hear what you guys have to say, but uh, metal work, it is something that biomeds also have to do, especially on occasion. And it's best to have those skills for that day <laughs> because that day is gonna happen. Thanks for watching guys.